I'm using the uh, new Leslie West 40th anniversary uh, signature model, and um, it's actually the second time I've used this. You notice it's got the uh, peace sign in the in the body. It's supposed to be my earring, but the guys down at Dean are very creative, and I noticed, actually my girlfriend noticed that it's an LW, and uh, it's really sharp looking guitar. It's got a great tone, so I thought I'd use this to uh, show you how I came up with this ingenious lick of Mississippi Queen. Uh, funny thing about it is that the opening riff is a minor riff, but then when I go into the when five chord and start playing a lead, it's major. So this is how you can combine the two and you can trick even me, because I didn't know it. Uh, but the uh, actual... could have come up with that. I mean, it was really simple, and it, it's a minor riff, I guess. And then it goes into the... What I tried to do in this, believe it or not, thanks to the great Felix Papillari, who's not here with us anymore, he produced it. And when I go out and play, uh, since I learned really how to play in the holes by listening to Eric Clapton, the best part is um, in playing a solo like that is so you can sing it back. It's really simple to sing it. It actually has a melody in itself because the, 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 the melody is... And uh, later on I go up high. I play it differently every night. In fact, when I recently redid it with Ozzy, we put a middle part in there. It was like, uh, <laughs> it actually made it interesting for me because I got a little bored playing it, but because a rock band and guitar hero, everybody knows that song. Uh, I have to refresh myself with it, but uh, <laughs> it's really simple. It's three chords, what is it, how many chords? And then I go to the five.
pretty simple, really. But uh, thank God for three chords. Is it four chords or three chords? Well, E, A, B, three chords. This is really uh, not rocket science. Yeah? But Corky and I had gotten together. Uh, I just got some money and I got an apartment on Park Avenue and he came over and he says, we need to write songs. And uh, I'll show you how naive I was. I thought the songs for my first album, you know, that album was done. I said, well, what do we have to write the songs for? And my manager said, well, we're doing a new album. I said, oh, wait a minute. We can't use those songs again that I just use. He said, no, you got to have new songs. Because I spent five years or four years writing those songs for that first Leslie West Mountain. Now we have to start again. Uh, so I said, well, what do you got? And Corky had this lyric, Mississippi Queen, you know what I mean? She taught me everything. I guess he was playing in a band called Energy in Nantucket, and the power had gone out uh, in the club. And all that was there was drums. And he saw this girl, this is what he says. And the moonlight was coming, you know, he's, he's like writing a porn movie or something. The, the, the moonlight was coming in and he saw her ass through the dress. So he started playing drums and scatting, Mississippi Queen, you know what I mean? He taught me every, so when he came to my house and he gave me that, I said, well, we gotta come up with something. So I figured a song had to have an intro. So I started playing around with it. And then it would go to the five chord. And I guess uh, that was sort of like going to the, uh, the chorus first, right? So then I had to go to the verse. And um, the chords were simple. I just went and played the uh, E, A, and B. Uh, that's it. Just had to have uh, fills in between, which I, you know, I overdubbed in the studio. But uh, that, that's how it came about. First, I came up with the, the lick. The, the, the introduction with the cowbell didn't come till we were in the studio, and Felix told him to count it off. And he just happened to have a cowbell in his kit. Uh, Corky didn't use toms, he had timbales. He played a lot of Latin shit. And he hit the cowbell as the count off, and it stayed. So as soon as he hit the cowbell, we went right to the black, black, went to the five chord. I didn't know what a one, four, and five was. I know what a five chord is now, you know, when I say to somebody, go to the five chord. In fact, when we play it, uh, if somebody plays it with us on stage, right at the end, when, when the rest of them dudes were getting their kicks, brother, beg your pardon, I was getting mine, I just point to my head. And everybody knows that we're gonna go to the five chord for the ending. You know, so it goes, well, the, well, the, well, the rest of them dudes, well, the rest of them dudes was making their bread. to the beginning for the ending. So I didn't know why I started on the five chord of the five. It just, uh, as soon as he did those two fills in the beginning, after that riff, uh, he does black and black, and then just goes to the five chord. Didn't, uh, but the actual, when I start singing, I think I start singing on the one, don't I? <laughs> Back 
your partner was getting mine. You to be queen. No, what I mean. It's it's very hard to play the lead and sing that and scream like uh, you're running for your life. So I just try to play the rest of them dudes was making them bread. Brother beg your pardon, I was getting mine. Yeah, I, I don't know exactly the, the, the licks I did. It's all, Cause I didn't know what I was doing in the first place. You know what I'm saying? If I knew, if I sat down there like uh, uh, Yitzhak Perlman and I wrote down, okay, over here on this section, I'm gonna be playing this. Then I would remember for life, but I swear to God, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just going out, playing in those holes. And I do remember that the first verse, I would play the answer my voice. And then, cause I would do the vocal first and then put the lick on after. So I'd see where you needed to put those things. If you put the licks on first then there's no room to sing. Cause I would have played all through the song, you know? But, uh, I think on the, on the beginning, uh, when they put that single out, one of the record companies used to do is, on the B side, they would put a song they wanted to promote on a 45, right? And uh, since our management owned the label, they said, well, fuck them, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna put Mississippi Queen on both sides. So they didn't give them a choice. So they had to play it, you know, because some, uh, some of these radio stations just say, well, you know, there's a B-side called uh, uh, Winchester Cathedral. We're gonna play uh, the B-side because they liked it better or something. So we, didn't just, we just didn't give them a choice. They had to play that song. And uh, it was only two minutes and I think we even lied a little bit. I think we put down, it was, cause the, the, the shorter the song was, the more commercials they can get in. So I think we wrote down, it was, Two minutes and I think it's about two minutes, 26 seconds. I don't know what it says. What does it say on there? Does it give you a time? Uh, 2.17? 2.31. Really? Oh, well that's for the extra rings on the, uh, yeah. It was short. But it was, what was good about it is it's like, I guess you wanted to hear it again. Yeah. It's too fucking long, you know, it's like, Jesus Christ, here we go. Like, and no offense, but in Agata David, it took a week and a half for me to, you know, listen to it. Uh, but that was a quick one. Yeah. You know, that's, sometimes that's how it happens. 